Hello everyone, welcome to this section of uh, cardiology. This uh, video vignette, uh, I'm Dr. Jaitley. I'll be talking to you about uh, what is IHSS. I know there are numerous intricacies now we're getting involved into as we move forward in our video uh, discussions in cardiology. Well, IHSS is idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis. It's a long name, but defines the exact condition that the person has. It's idiopathic, that means we don't know the cause. It's hypertrophic because it's hypertrophing within the septum right here. And then it's subaortic. The aorta, remember, is originating in the left ventricle, so it is subaortic, so it's below the aorta origin. And then it is a stenosis. Why? Because there's a narrowing of the aortic opening. You see how much you've learned just from that IHSS? So idiopathic, hypertrophic, subaortic, stenosis. Now that's how it was known, but then the other, other terms have been also coined. One is HOCM, H-O-C-M, or the other one is ASH. Hypertrophic, somebody call it hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, because it is a cardiomyopathy. Why? Because the, the heart is a sick uh, muscle here. It's a myopathic, that means the heart is not well. That's why it's hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, HOCM. Same thing, but different terms. But defining the condition somewhat better, according to some authors. And ASH, which is asymmetrical septal hypertrophy, ASH. So it's like, we know it's asymmetrical because normally you would have hypertrophy here as well. Like in hypertension individuals, we have seen the muscle, even hypertrophies here and here alike, not asymmetrically like this. So asymmetrical septal because it's located in the septum between separating the right ventricle and the left ventricle and hypertrophy. Simple. So remember, all these three terms are interchangeable. IHSS, ASH, or HOCOM, they're interchangeable. Whatever you feel like, you can call them and the message is clear. The pathology or the problem here is the myocardial fibrils, which are microscopic uh, muscle cells, if you will, they are in disarray. They're not contracting in a, in a concerted way. Normally what will happen is say, in a normal heart or normal wall, let's shift our uh, attention to this right ventricle for instance. So right ventricle will move in this direction during systole in that direction like this, so that there's a proper squeeze and the pulmonary artery uh, gets, the, gets the output or you know, receives the outflow. Here also in a normal heart, you'll see the rest of the left ventricle wall will be moving in a concerted fashion, so the blood flow is nicely headed towards the aortic opening. However, here in the septum region, this is all in a disarray that the myocardial fibrils will just, you know, they will contract, but not in a concerted way, and therefore it can lead to even further obstructive pattern within the, within the myocardial cells and the fibrils, etc. So there is a disarray, just so that you understand. Remember, it's a chromosomal linked uh, yeah, we're starting to see a lot of chromosomal links. So just at this point, uh, we don't have the exact uh, you know, details and we'll worry about that at a later time. But let's understand that there's a chromosomal link and therefore it's congenital and it you know, manifests at younger age. Specifically so in the athletes uh, where the mortality can be a huge problem because uh, we know sudden cardiac deaths in athletes specifically because they exert and overexert and get into competitive sports. And therefore, it's very, 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 very important. I cannot under, um, uh, underestimate this because this is so important that you want to save a life. You want to get the IHSS ruled out in a young athlete, specifically so if he or she is presenting with a heart murmur or ever had a chance uh, to have a syncope, specifically during the time in exerting, like jogging, running, playing basketball, etc., etc. Invariably, there is chest pain and there is some dynamic systolic murmur that's heard by a physician and therefore should be immediately referred to a cardiologist. A sudden cardiac death episode obviously warrants a full work up, including a 2D echo and ultra monitoring and, and of course, uh, hospitalization, etc. obviously. But the fact is that 
All of these are very, very important to clinical entities where they present with. Family history is important too because there is chromosomal linkage and you'll see, you know, distant cousins or some uncles and aunts, etc. may have had a similar episode in the family and one could say at that point that there is some family link there as well. Diagnosis is by a 2D echo. When you get a 2D echo, obviously, it'll show the ASH, the asymmetrical septal hypertrophy, just like here. On this echo panel on the right side, you'll see the septum will be overgrown. I've not shown it here, but just so that uh, picture this in this septum region here, so you'll understand. Here's the septum right there, so it'll be hypertrophy. So what will happen is the aorta will be obstructed. During the time when the left ventricle free wall is moving in, the aorta will will get obstructed and therefore it's called a dynamic obstruction, specifically more so during systole. There is an obstruction as is, even while the person is not exerting. But the fact is that when the ventricle contracts more vigorously, especially during exertion, as you know, the heart rate goes up and the contractility goes up, this obstruction will be accentuated. And that results into syncope or exertional syncope or even a sudden cardiac death episode because of the life-threatening arrhythmias that can ensue during the time when this obstruction is present and there is cerebral hypoperfusion or less blood flow going to the brain because remember aorta is sending blood up to the entire body obviously from head to toe so when it is supplying the brain in an obstructive fashion the, there is a lack of blood flow going up so cardiac output drastically drops to a critical level the gradient across this obstruction that means before the before the valve before the valve the gradient here between the left ventricle here as well as the you know the outflow tract will really determine what the severity of this um, uh, hokum or ash or IHSS is arrhythmias can be assessed on a halter specifically that's a different test where you can see ventricular arrhythmias you can see supraventricular arrhythmias because the left atrium is also enlarged here in this setting uh, mitral regurgitation is quite prevalent because the obstructive pattern here some of the blood will leak back so there is enough uh, and sometimes this leaflet also gets gets to be obstructed by the septum in the in the closure so there is a whole pathology, the whole cardiomyopathy, the whole left ventricle is sick, unfortunately. I thank you for your attention in this. I hope, uh, and we'll talk more because now we're getting into more details of uh, what IHS is. But just wanted to give you basic ideas to what IHS is or ASH or HOCOM is. Again, these are interchangeable terms. Feel free and uh, supplement your information with your medical textbooks, journals, etc. And talking to your friends. So, so I'd love to come back and uh, discuss more at a later time. Thanks so much.